Okay, hello and welcome to Physio EX um, exercise. So this Physio EX exercise eight, we have finished activity one, two, three, and this is the last activity four, which is assessing lipase digestion of fats. <laughs> so we know that enzymes have optimal properties meaning that they need an optimal temperature to operate, and that is usually physiological temperature, 37 degrees Celsius. We have also examined that enzymes, in addition to requiring proper homeostatic temperature in order to operate, they also need the proper pH. We have seen that amylase works in the mouth at a pH of seven, and we've seen that pepsin in the past activity works optimally at pH of two in the stomach. Um, so fluctuations of temperature and fluctuations, we've seen that fluctuation of temperature when we boil these enzymes, we denature them, and that hyperthermia leads to the breakdown of these uh, uh, reducing amino acid uh, monomers that make up these uh, enzyme uh, the, these enzyme subunits that make up for us these globular um, enzymes. So we, so we need to have the proper temperature and the proper pH. So just because the pH has changed, it does not render the enzyme inactive, as we have seen in the last experiment that uh, uh, pepsin works best at pH 2. But when the pH has increased to 7, we had a subliminal, very small uh, uh, turnover rate where we did have um, uh, polypeptides being converted into their building block, uh, their building uh, block amino acids. But the turnover rate was very small when compared to pH 2. So now it's a give and take situation, but we all agree that definitely pH is a requirement for um, enzymes optimal temperature, uh, enzymes optimal activity. So now we also talked about the specificity. We said that amylase breaks down carbohydrates, pepsin breaks down uh, peptidases, uh, proteins, and lipase breaks down lipids. Lipase is not going to go breaking down polypeptides and carbohydrate polymers, while amylase is not going to go break down peptides and lipids. So the specificity, the substrate specificity, amylase is specific to carbohydrates, pepsin specific for proteins, lipase specific for lipids and fats. So now let's take this experiment. Okay, so we're going to be in our objective uh, explaining how the enzyme activity of pancreatic lipase. So we don't only have pancreatic lipase, we also have lingual lipase. And uh, we see that we're looking at, the, we're going to modulate the pH and see, see the effects. And we see that lipase is very important for the hydrolysis and the breakdown of fats. And we're also going to be learning that in the digestive system, we do not only have essential or main organs, such as the, you know, the, the oral cavity, the tongue, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, and you know, the, the colon and the, the rectum. These are the essential main organs, but we do have accessory organs of the digestive system. And these are your pancreas and the liver, now, uh, very important. Uh, the same thing with the respiratory system. We've seen that the diaphragm, for example, is an accessory organ. So being an accessory organ does not make you any less useful than an actual essential uh, organ. So accessory, it helps, but it's actually really important. So we're going to be looking at bile that is secret, synthesized synthesized, generated, and created by the liver, but it is stored in the gallbladder. Many students, unfortunately, assume that the gallbladder is what generates and what uh, uh, makes uh, uh, the bile. That's not true, actually. It is the liver. So uh, we're going to be looking at pH, the optimal pH being a very important factor to the lipase activity. Same thing with temperature. So temperature and pH are optimal properties for the, the activity of the enzyme. 
Okay, so fats and oils belong to a diverse class of molecules known as lipids. And triglycerides, these are, a type, these are types of lipids. They make up both fats and oils. So at room temperature, fats happen to be solid and oils happen to be liquid, but their structure is very similar. So both are poorly soluble in water because they are hydrophobic and nonpolar. And this insolubility of triglycerides is a big problem when it comes to digestion. So they tend to clump up together and glue together. And that's why, you know, lipase is unable to digest the entire clump. It can only digest the surface part because it does not have access to the core. That's where bile salts come in. So bile, this is very important. Bile does not have any chemical digestion properties. All that it does, it has mechanical and physical, only physical, only mechanical activity that it spreads out. It spreads out the fats and makes lipase more accessible to digest it from all corners and all sides. But itself, if you just put bile with lipids, it will never digest it and break it. it will, bile will never break down triglycerides into glycerol and free fatty acids. That's the job of lipase. But what bile does is that it makes the job of lipase easier by physically allowing more surface area access to, to breaking down this uh, triglyceride. They are secreted into the small intestine during digestion to physically emulsify the lipids. So bile salts act like a detergent. They separate the lipid clumps and increase the surface area uh, accessible to the lipase enzymes. So as a result, two reactions must occur. So we have triglyceride clumps and when we add bile to them, the process of emulsification happens and that spreads out and causes minute triglyceride uh, droplets. And we have triglyceride, when we add lipase to it, it will convert it into monoglyceride and two fatty acids. So lipase hydrolyzes each triglyceride to a monoglyceride and two fatty acids. In addition to the pancreatic lipase secreted into the small intestine, we have, as I mentioned before, lingual lipase, and there's also gastric lipase. Um, so now let's look more into the experiment. Okay, which of the following is our true of bile? It works by, no, it has nothing to do chemically. It's just mechanically and physically. The substrate used in the simulation is vegetable oil. When fatty acids are liberated by lipase, the pH is definitely going to decrease. One of the products of the chemical digestion of lipids, obviously, lipase is gonna digest lipids into free fatty acids and glycerol. Submit that. Okay, now drag a test tube to the first holder. And this, this is the incubation unit where we're going to have five more test tubes automatically being placed in the incubation unit. And then after we add all of our substrates and reagents, um, the incubation unit is going to evenly homogenize and mix all of the content together evenly. So now let's look at all of our different. So each test tube, we, we don't just add the substance, we have to hypothesize what's gonna happen together. So pH seven stimulates for us the pH in the mouth. That's for lingual lipase. And pH 9 approximates the pH in the intestine, the small intestine. And pH 2 is obviously the pH in the stomach. So now let's look at one. One is lipase, vegetable oil, bile salts, and pH 7. So lipase, bile salts, pH 7. So that is that sounds for me like a perfect environment for the reaction. Uh, this is seven is the, is that that's for lingual lipase, but the best one is going to be this one. That that is the small intestine. So here we will see some reactants being converted into product, but the most is going to be in in three where the pH is 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 where the pH is closest. But actually, three has deionized water lipase, bile salt, but it has no substrate, so that's not good. So we need pH 9 along with lipase and vegetable oil and bile salts. I mean, like this one, 
Yeah, this one, like tube six, has lipase, vegetable oil, bile salts, and pH nine. I mean, tube six will give us the most, that's the most perfect environment. Let's look at two. Two is lipase. We're going to add the enzyme and vegetable oil, the substrate, the ionized water, and there's no bile salts, so pH 7. So this is lacking bile salts, obviously, pH 7. And then uh, tube 3, that's going to be lipase, uh, deionized water, and bile salts. We're going to even out, but there is no vegetable oil. PH not. There is no vegetable oil, so there's no substrate. So there's no reaction that's going to happen here. Tube four, we're going to have deionized water, vegetable oil, bile salts, and pH seven. Tube five, we're going to have lipase, vegetable oil, and bile salts. Offer two. Tube six, going to have lipase, vegetable oil, bile salts, and pH nine. What does the pH measure? It measures both lipase activity and fatty acid release. Excellent. Now let's incubate. So it's wrong with tube one. What is tube one missing? Tube one should have lipase, vegetable oil. Lipase, vegetable oil, or oh, we forgot to add vegetable oil. I forgot to add vegetable oil. So that's fine now. Now let's incubate. So now everything is incubating. Measure. Okay, which tube do you think will have the highest lipase activity? I need pH 9, bile salts, pH 9, bile salt, vegetable oil. Wow, this is amazing. That sounds like this one. Okay, now let's take one. Measure the pH. Then we're going to record the data, record data, place it back. Take two, measure pH, record data, put it back. Three, measure the pH, record data, put it back. Four, measure the pH, record data, put it back. Measure the pH. Or data, put it back and measure the pH, record data, and put it back. So now we have all the results. Now let's go and analyze these results. Okay, why is it difficult to detect whether lipase is active in tube five? So lipase, vegetable oil, bile salts, and pH two. So pH2, that's a very low pH. And we know that when lipase is working, converting the reactant vegetable oil into the products of free fatty acids and glycerol, what happens here is that the expected thing is for pH to go down. But here the pH is already so low pH is so low that we cannot detect exactly. So the pH is already very low. So a decrease in pH might be difficult. That sounds like a perfect answer. Okay. Now, let's analyze the results. Okay. What is the product of lipase hydrolysis? Free fatty acids and glycerol. From your results, which pH is ideal for pancreatic lipase? Pancreatic lipase. So let, let's look at the results. So we have pH, when pH is nine, bile salts. So the pH here stayed the same, did not go down. 
body. And when pH is seven, stay the same line. Which pH is the best? So I'm gonna need to have all, so we need to have lipase, 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 vegetable oil, um, vegetable oil as here, nine and seven. And I'm gonna need bile salts, with bile salt here, lipase, vegetable oil, bile salt. That's a two, that's a nine. But obviously works best at nine. See, when the pH is not, when the pH buffer is nine, okay, so that shows you that. So it works better at pH seven, because at pH seven, you see, we had lipase, as in lipase, we had the bile salts, bile salts, we had the substrate, vegetable oil, vegetable oil, and the pH here was seven, here pH was nine. But what happened here is that at pH seven, the overall pH dropped to six. So now it's more acidic because it's more acidic that indicates lipase is more active, obviously, and that is generating more products, is generating for us more products. So there is there's a um, products being generated to free fat acids and glycerol. So it's definitely got to be to one. And that is a pH seven. Sorry about that. pH seven. Which to confirm there is no lipase in bile salts or vegetable oil. So if I want to confirm there is no lipase, I must ensure that the tube has no lipase to begin with. So two and three are already crossed out. So which to confirm there is no lipase in bile salt or vegetable oil. So definitely not lipase, so it's gotta be four. Where in the body does pancreatic lipase hydrolyze triglycerides? It's gotta be in the small intestine. Submit. Explain why you can't fully test the lipase activity in tube five. This, we talked about that. When the pH is two, the pH is already too low to detect any changes. We're supposed to see that the pH went down, although the buffer was seven, it went down to six, for example. Or the buffer was nine, it went down to maybe eight point something. It got more acidic. The pH went down, indicating more acidity. But if the pH buffer is already two, that's too dangerously low, so we cannot be able to detect anything. Uh, which two had the highest lipase activity? It's uh, obviously, that is wrong. It's not tube six, it's tube one. So tube one had the highest lipase activity because you see that the pH, see that the pH was seven in the buffer, but the overall pH dropped down to 6.21, indicating that high lipase activity and high turnover from vegetable oil into free fatty acids and glycerols. That makes the overall pH become more acidic, drop down from uh, seven into 6.2. Explain why pancreatic lipase would be active in both the mouth and the pancreas. So it, the, the pancreatic lipase, in the mouth, we see that the, the optimal pH, the pH is seven, that's also for lingual lipase, and that is an optimal pH for the activity of lipase, seven it is sufficient. And we see the same thing in the in the intestine, the um, the pH is all is very close to from approximating from seven point two to seven point four, um, and in the pancreas the the pH is sometimes up to nine. So that range is very close to the optimal pH of seven. So seven and nine is good, but when the pH is two, then that's that that's not going to be an optimal pH. For, for the uh, we're going to be an optimal pH for the actions of uh, that of uh, lipase.
describe the process of bioemulsification of lipids. So this is a physical process where we spread out uh, uh, and uh, make you know the, the the clumps more spread out so lipase can attack from all sides and have more access, increasing the surface area and accessibility of lipase to destroy the uh, to to that to uh, digest the lipids. Go ahead, just go to exercise eight. Okay, so for exercise eight, four, explain why lipase would be active both in the mouth and the stomach since activity of pancreatic lipase is highest at eight, it should be active in the mouth and the pancreas because okay, we talked about that. Okay. Thank you. I'll see you.